Hey guys, how are you going? My name is Dom and in this video we're going to be wrapping Ajax in a promise. Okay, so basically uh, we're going to be creating a new function in JavaScript which performs a GET request and all of the uh, success and error handling will be done using promises and the then and catch methods. Okay, so um, I don't suggest you actually use this for production websites or production um, projects, um, you know, because chances are if the browser supports promises, it's going to support fetch. So just use fetch instead. Um, this is more for a bit of fun and to actually understand promises. Okay, so let's go inside the text editor here and take a look at the current structure. So I've got this index.html file um, and I've also got this people.json file. So this file right here um, is going to be what we're going to be requesting using the new function. Okay. So let's go inside the HTML file and begin on the JavaScript. We can define a new function called promise jax, which will take in a URL. All right. And this one here is going to, of course, return a promise. Okay. So um, to actually use this function once it's done, we're going to basically just say promise jax, pass in the URL. So people.json in this case. And we're going to say dot then. This will, um, this will of course have access to the response text. So we can say um, JSON string, and we can say console dot log JSON string. And for the catch scenario, we can basically just say function and console dot log or console dot error, and pass in the error message or the error object inside there. So this is our intended use of the promise jax function. So of course, um, this JSON string right here is basically the response text from the server. Okay, so let's go inside here and begin on the promise. So this will return a new promise. And as per usual, it will take in a function as the first argument called the executor. Okay, so inside here we can say function, and this will accept two arguments, resolve and reject. So for those of you who who, um, who don't know, uh, basically resolve refers to this function inside here, and reject, of course, refers to this function inside here in the catch. Okay, so those are your two different scenarios or outcomes for um, the whole promise. Okay, um, so inside here we're going to be doing all of the AJAX stuff. So let's make a new constant, call this one XHR equal to a new instance of XML HTTP request. Alrighty. So we're going to say xhr.open. It's going to be a get request. All right. And it's going to be going to the URL provided in this parameter up here. Okay. We can say xhr.send. So right now, all of this stuff works just fine. And it's pretty basic xhr. Okay. So the way it's going to work is, well, for the then and the catch, um, we're going to basically be calling these two functions as required inside this function right here. So we're going to translate the on load and the on error events from the XHR um, into the resolve and reject functions of our promise. All right. So we're going to say xhr.onload. We're going to fire off this function right here. And it's going to simply call the resolve and pass in this dot response text. So of course, um, this refers to the XHR. And of course, the response text is going to be all of this JSON inside here. And of course, from there, because this resolve refers to this function right here, this JSON string is going to be the response text. Okay, cool. So that's done. We can then say XHR dot on error equals function and do the exact same thing. So we'll say uh, reject and just say new error, network error. So basically, um, this will be creating a new instance of an error um, and basically just say, yeah, there's been a network error because I think most of the time, if not every time, um, the on error handler or event from the XHR refers to some sort of network error. Okay. And everything such as uh, 404 not found, 200 okay, every single uh, response from the server 
is going to be going to the onload function. So don't think that 404s and things like that are going to go to the on error. They're going to go to the onload. So if I was to now save this, refresh the browser, in the console we of course get the JSON output. So um, very simple and um, definitely very interesting. Okay, so um, we can just actually go ahead and uh, test the catch. So um, I'm going to go back inside here and to actually uh, mimic some sort of network error, we'll need to uh, turn the browser to be offline. Okay, so basically, I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be copying all of this right here and pasting it into um, the console. And um, essentially, hold on, sorry. Essentially, um, we'll just say yeah, go into network tab and uh, turn off um, online. So inside the throttling tab we can just say uh, offline right here and now the browser is technically offline so now we should get a network error when we're going to try and run um, the promise jack so press enter and we get here network error so that right there is of course um, the error we produced inside the promise okay so both the catch oh sorry both the then and the catch work perfectly all right so um, obviously here um, we are getting um, we are getting the JSON return to us in plain text. So if I refresh here, we get the JSON in plain text. So what if we want to actually automatically convert um, the JSON to an actual JavaScript object? So very similar to the fetch JSON method. Well, we can do this using the new function. So let's go back inside here and make the function accept a second argument. This will be um, parse JSON, basically true or false, whether or not to convert the response text to JSON in the event of success. Okay, so let's go down here and say true as the second argument. So now we want um, the response in the console, this right here, to basically just be a JavaScript object representing, of course, this right here. So. Uh, let's go back inside here and add the code inside the onload event. So we're going to say if parse JSON, okay, if this is true, we're going to basically say try, try to convert the JSON string to an object. So JSON.parse, the response text, and if this fails, because this can actually fail. If your if your um, if your response is not JSON, then this will fail and actually throw an error, which is why we're using a try catch here. So if the JSON parsing fails for any reason, we're going to say reject and actually pass in the error. Okay. So now, basically saying yeah, cool. We're going to resolve and pass in the object. So the return value from the parse method right here. And now, of course, this will contain a JavaScript array or object depending on what this is. In this case, it's going to be an array. Okay, cool. So if that's not the case, if if the second argument is false or not given, then we're going to simply uh, resolve the same way as previously. So now I can save this, refresh the browser, and we get an array in the console. So it's working really well. Um, just to see an example of one of those failures, if I was to go inside here and uh, put some random stuff at the start of the string, this should fail the um, fail the parsing. I can save this and refresh, and we get here um, this syntax error right here, which I believe came from um, our catch. There you go. So it comes from our catch down here, which of course came from up here in the reject. Okay, cool. So um, that is all done. Um, now, what about if you want to? Um, what if you want to know whether or not um, it was a 404 not found? So let's just say back inside here, I change this to be uh, people onejson which does not exist, of course. If I was to save this and refresh, we get here um, the same JSON error. That's because. Um, the response in this case was actually my standard Apache um, HTML that says file not found. So this of course fails the JSON parsing. 
Um, let's just go back inside here and actually uh, set this to false and save and refresh and now we'll get an actual response so refresh and we get here all of the content so of course in this scenario 404 not found um, was not an error which means the on load has you know uh, been satisfied and this is running so to actually handle your 404s um, you might want to do that inside your then so we're going to change this instead of accepting or you know uh, having access to the JSON string and just the JSON string um, we're going to instead say XHR all right and then we're going to log XHR so now we're going to pass in the XHR to um, the resolve function um, this essentially renders our JSON parsing useless so I'm just going to get rid of all this stuff here and replace it with resolve and pass in this. So this of course refers to the XHR. So now we're getting the entire XHR object inside the resolve. And to be honest, I reckon this is the best way to do it. I can save this and refresh and now in the console we get the entire request. So now if we expand this, we of course get access to all of the standard properties and methods of the XHR um, and including the status of 404. So you can just say, yeah, cool. I can say if xhr.status equals 404, or let's just say not equal to 200, then, I don't know, log out, there was an error. Otherwise, otherwise you can, of course, uh, do your standard stuff where you log out xhr.response text instead. So I can save this and refresh, and now we get there was an error. If I was to change this back to an existing file, save this and refresh, we get here once again the response in plain text. And that is how you can wrap an Ajax in a promise in JavaScript. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.